And away we go. And it's the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Go to the website. They will deliver right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop or head down and see our good friends in Dayton, Kentucky, Wednesday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. Tell them to pump it up and save yourself 15% off of your order. All right. Well, uh, I I wasn't sure if we were going to do a nightcap tonight. I didn't, I didn't really know what to think. I knew it was going to be late by the time we got home, but that was too good. (laughs) That was an event. It was, uh, let me say this. If you questioned, would that event be worth whatever it cost? The answer was yes. Fifth Third Arena was packed to the rafters. Jason and Travis Kelsey were vintage peak, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. Jason and Travis Kelsey. Those two are entertainers. The the kind of line go like when people asked about the money, they're like consider it a concert, consider it something wildly entertaining that's going to consume a night uh, of your time and be well worth it. And it was worth every penny and more. Uh, I know that's hard to say from a media perspective because we get in and and whatever, but. That was about as uh, as good of an event as you will see at Fifth Third Arena. The crowd was electric. Jason and Travis were electric. The guests were electric. The Lumbaby games were better than I anticipated uh, so, in terms of entertainment value. <laughs> uh, we will get to that. But just setting this all up, it was fantastic. And my sidekick tells me, she had the best night of her life, Keegan. That was so fun. I met everybody. It, like, you have to be on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met Jason, and I met Travis, and I met Kylie, and I met them all. And I'm meeting Jason again tomorrow and Saturday. And he said that he was excited to see me Saturday at the spring game. So just let everybody know. Were they as nice as advertised? Yeah, Jason hugged me and when he saw me and was like, Kelsey, and I was like, oh my gosh. She literally hyperventilated for 30 minutes, Keegan. <laughs> so we did the media scrum with Jason. She got to meet Jason right after she met Travis. She was like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, well, we can walk across the, the thing. There's a couple places we can go and eat and whatever. And like, it was like five o'clock. Obviously, the show didn't start till seven. She's like, we have two hours to kill. I got a <laughs> nervous energy. I got to go do something. So we went to Subway, event sponsored by Subway. So we walked across to Subway. And literally every like two minutes, all I heard was <sighs> like, I wanted to get her a brown paper bag. Yeah. She was having a panic attack, like as like 25 minutes after she got to meet them. Mm-hmm. But they were gracious. They were kind. You saw Jason was like, Kelsey, and like gave yeah. her a big hug and chatted with her for a minute. And she literally couldn't control herself. It was it was great. And then Kylie might be the nicest person on the planet. She's so nice. <laughs> if you're going to learn how to do this, one of the things you have to learn is that this is a camera and you have to be on it. You have a great time. Yeah. Was it the best night of your life? Yeah. I wish Taylor was there though. Uh, I oh, mean, you can't, win them. Sometimes, <laughs> you can't win them all. Sometimes gains are sometimes gains you have the best night of your life. But like now there's a standard and you can have better nights. If you would have met everybody plus Taylor, that would have been it. You would have been done having great nights for the rest of your life. You would have peaked at 13. It's all downhill. Yeah. So we we left room. And you met Craig? Yeah. I'm Nothing on Craig. Too. Huh? 
<laughs> nothing on Craig. No, nothing oh, no, I love him. I told her, like, if you want to meet Taylor, Craig is probably your in. Jason and Travis are going to be busy. Whatever is happening when Taylor is there, Craig is probably the person you need to get the bridge between you and Taylor. So she got to meet Craig and Derek Wolf. Uh, she met Ruben Johnson, uh, Haruki Nakamura, John mm -hmm. Hughes. It was a who's who of like 2008, 2009 Bearcats uh, yeah. that were there tonight. So are you good? Mm -hmm. I'm going to bed. Have there fun. Go. I'm going to put my headphones on now. Okay, good night. I love you. Glad you had fun. <laughs> I like I think that was the dad of the year. Yeah, basically. I, I might not win best dad ever, but I think I think I win dad of the year tonight. Um it was a good night for me. It was a great night for you. Big yeah. night for Jay. Josh You're you were Josh, so it was an even greater night. She saw Josh too, and he shook her hand. So yeah, There's a lot that happened tonight. <laughs> you know, it's a it, you know it's a pretty good day for the University of Cincinnati when Dan Scaling's announcing his return is kind of like a minuscule <laughs> event. Right, it's happened. the back burner event. <laughs> yeah. Um, Although the picture you put up uh, on your story with Jason and Travis on stage and then yeah. Dan Skilling's like standing right behind up behind them. them. Yeah. Perfect. Reagan. 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 Chef's yeah. kiss. I told Chef's her that kiss. was my favorite picture of the night, and she was like, "Really? Like, yeah." Yes, it tells the story of the day. Yeah. yeah, the day started with Dan Skilling's return. It ended with New Heights. Yeah, and it so, I, and I put this, I put this in my story, but it's like Dan and Seamoss are big men on campus. Like cr the crowds are exploding for them every game, just wondering what's going to happen. And then Jason and Travis are there, and it's like there's a very, <laughs> very split. Like they are in another stratosphere of yeah. lore and the steam. So, so uh, I'm I'm fascinated by this because you were a kid. Like I don't mm -hmm. say this to be disrespectful. Like you were legitimately a kid when mm -hmm. Jason and Travis were here. You have grown up more so knowing them as NFL guys. They I have, knew Travis. Like Jason's in the that. NFL. Half of yeah. your life as an NFL guy. Yeah. Travis has been more in the NFL than when he was at Cincinnati. What was the experience like for you seeing, like, how much these guys truly do mean to this community, even though they've been – and – if you haven't read Keegan's article, go to BearcatJournal.com. You made it free, right? I don't think it was VIP. Yeah, it's, it's free and it's story. Go to, go to BearcatJournal.com. It is a phenomenal summarization of like what the event was about, what it signified, what it what it meant. I, I'm fascinated to hear like your experience as a fan of these guys. You were you were a UC fan growing up as, yeah. as a kid. You're now an unbiased journalist. Don't give me that quotation marks. <laughs> but, I, but as a kid growing up, like yeah. you rooted for UC. These were the kids, yeah. the guys that were like stars, like when you were a child. What was this event and experience like for you getting to be there and kind of take in everything? Yeah. So like to gauge people on what I remember about them. I don't remember ever watching Jason. I remember Travis. He was also an offensive lineman and you were a child. Yeah. Like you don't watch Still, offensive linemen. I know the child. dudes that get yeah. drafted. Like the yeah. dudes that have NFL potential. I know them and I follow them. Um, I remember the jump pass from Travis, uh, Belk Bowl touchdown. Like the end of his career was kind of the first time that I started really getting into it. But I remember – when they came out with the price point and they said it's like comparable to a concert, the first thing in my head and I was like, okay, but like live music from your favorite artist, I don't think they're going to be able to emulate that in any way, but they access a completely different like feeling of um, yeah. just nostalgia, I would say. 
is the number one word that I'd think of because the first guest is Desmond Ritter. And then you're sitting on a stage with Jason Kelsey, Travis, and Des, and these fans are like trying to combine the three eras of football that are talking to each other and discussing it. And then you bring on Orlando Brown Jr. and Joe Burrow. And that's just a whole other thing that Cincinnati fans have to try to mix together. And it was sure. all just, it was but all ties to all of it, right? Orlando yes. Brown played in Kansas City with Travis. Yeah. And Jason had the exchange with Joe Burrow when Cincinnati was recruiting Joe Burrow. Yeah. And I I was a little upset. I understand why they didn't get into it, but Joe Burrow committed to Cincinnati before he took that trip to LSU. And then mm. essentially Ed Orgeron was like, and a big reason Joe Burrow committed to Cincinnati before he took that trip to LSU was that interaction with Jason Kelly that Joe talked about tonight more than he's ever talked about before. He, almost, he got a little emotional talking yeah. about it. And then he went to LSU and Ed Orgeron was like, hey, Joe, you're not, I'm not letting you get back on that plane. <laughs> you're not leaving. This. And Joe, you going you going to come play with the Gold Tigers? Uh, <laughs> and literally, didn't let him leave until he committed to LSU. It ended yeah. up working out best for everybody. Yeah, but like the ties were fascinating to hear them all kind of mm -hmm. weave together. Yeah, and it really just felt like <clears throat> because they could have done it in Kansas City, they could have done it in Cleveland, they could have done it in Philadelphia as like a big arena thing just to make a ton of money, but they chose to do it in Cincinnati for a reason. And it's like something that I went into my article about. It's like, they don't really have a reason to love UC as much as they do. Like you see all these guys. Well, they do, who, but yes, right. they, you see all these guys who go to college and then have all the success. And then they, it's kind of like way on the back burner of where they went to school, but Jason and Travis, they claim Cincinnati and it's like on their heart, like they wear it on their yeah. sleeve. And I think that's awesome. Um, and I think like, even if you had just ended after the interviews and the oh, podcast God. stuff, the end was, <laughs> it was perfect. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Chef's fucking kiss. When John Cunningham showed up yeah, with the microphone in his hand, I was like, where's this going? Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> what are we doing? That we've got John Cunningham like on screen with the microphone as a an active part of this podcast. Yeah. And as soon as he said it, it was like, oh, this is perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah. They bring the podium out. Neville Pinto is in the full <laughs> graduation garb. He he calls Travis to the podium. Travis reads <laughs> Neville Pinto's. <laughs> He's like, Travis, come make a script. Travis, because he's Travis, thought <laughs> that the notes on the thing were what he was supposed to read. Yeah. He was supposed to give, just be Travis for a minute. He reads Neville Pinto's like, we are gathered here today. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, then, Ridiculous. and then he does the most Travis thing ever. He stands between John Cunningham and Neville Pinto and absolutely slugs a 16 ounce beer yeah. to the point that it's pouring out the side of his mouth. It was, I, and so good. Before that, he yells, You got you to fight, your, fight right to for your right to party through tears streaming down his face. Yeah. <laughs> like it was unreal how perfect it was. I don't know if it was a surprise or not. Like in wrestling, that's key fab. I don't know if they knew that was going to happen. I would yeah. assume Donna and Ed obviously had to know because Donna and Ed yeah, were there to on. come up on the stage. Um, I don't know if Jason and Travis knew that they were going to do that. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably never tell us <laughs> whether that was planned or like, surprise right yeah it was it was such a perfect cap to what was a here's the other thing i will say keegan and i i 
I'll probably get in trouble with UC people for this. They are very lucky the weather wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. That event, I don't think, hits the same at Nippert Stadium. With a 35% capacity crowd, probably. I, even if they even if they sold it out. Like the audio isn't the same in there. Yeah. The the feeling of being right on top of the interviews and the Lumbaby games and all of that stuff. Like, I just don't think it hits the same. There's so much space. There's so much air to fill in Nippert Stadium. That was an arena event. Mm -hmm. That thing was packed to the rafters. All the way. Mm -hmm. Every seat was taken. There was nowhere for anybody to sit. Royer. Ryan, Mr. Bearcat, Ryan Royer, was like, ah, I, I saw Ryan afterwards, and I, we'll talk about this a lot on Monday night, I'm sure. I saw Ryan afterwards, and he was like, well, we were at Adriatico's, um, and we thought we could just come over at like 6.30 or 7 and be fine. Yeah. There were no seats anywhere no. in the entire arena at 7 o'clock. Like, yeah. you had to, like, find... Like, like you're walking into a like a movie theater, like Avengers, Endgame, uh, like three minutes before the movie starts, and you got to find two seats for you and your your date to squeeze into. That's what it was like at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. It was so impressive. It was so yeah. cool. It was a yeah. It was a really great event, and I don't know what their plans were for seating um, at Nippert. I don't know if there was like going to be a lot of seats down low, like literally on the field, but I know that the passes were different in terms of VIP pit and stuff. Yeah. If you fill the field, like it's a graduation almost, I could see that working better, but I don't think that's what the plan was, but I can't, I'm not, you can't quote me on that, but it, it, it turned out perfectly. Like it was like a wrestling event kind of. Yeah. Like, it was you know, like people coming yeah. out through the smoke, John Cunningham, Surprise, John Cena, Breaking Glass, <laughs> Interruption. Is that uh, John Cunningham's music? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it was awesome. The maybe games were cool. Um, Reagan I got a really good. I maybe would have cut it to an hour. Maybe, yeah. Instead of 7 to 8, it like went 7 to like 8.45. And don't do impossible trivia questions for Dante Corleone. Like, that was unreal. Was riding the bull, like. I, How many games I did I play in in the NFL? What? <laughs> Not, no, I don't know. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, look. Jizzle James. Clutch. Squirrel. <laughs> he went one for four or something. Right. But he got the one that mattered. He hit yeah. the shot. <laughs> you know, he had a rough, he had a rough first half, but like he hit the shot that, you know, that, that mattered, yeah. that mattered, uh, squirrel. He, he looked, <laughs> he was, he was very proud of himself that he, that he nailed yeah. squirrel. Yeah. They also, they just did a good job in terms of the entertainment value of it. Like yeah. how they just spoke, how the flow went. There were some awkward moments and some pauses, which is natural, especially when it's like a yeah. new event that it's, you're it doing. It was like four after. hours, dude. Yeah. It went from seven to like 1050. Yeah. But That's for football players who are, are just getting new in this media thing, I thought that they did a great job and it kind of set the standard for what they can do in the future in terms of Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Kansas City, Cleveland, that, that kind of thing. So. It it was it was every bit as good as any con like well there's been concerts I've been to that are better like I you know you see it. like well you see like a you know a world renowned like incredible recording artist that's a you know that's a different thing but in terms of again they went live at seven and they were done right before eleven o'clock mm -hmm. that's four hours. They had an intermission between the Lumbaby games and the uh, the podcast, but 
that crowd was entertained for four hours. I don't think there was really any point where anybody was like, it's kind of boring. Yeah. Like I, they are so good at this, at all of this. And I think they were probably taken aback a little by how big an event it was as well. Mm -hmm. You mean the brothers? came out of that tunnel, yeah. Yeah. Jason and Travis came out of that tunnel and that place erupted, it had a wrestling feel to it. Yeah. I'll agree with you on that. Like, when the smoke hit and the flames went up and Travis came running out of the tunnel, it felt like like a wrestling pop, like, Mm -hmm. if you will. Like, fresh off the heels of maybe the greatest WrestleMania in history <laughs> that Jason Kelsey was in. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like a wrestling pop. Like it felt like the kind of the roof almost blew off the place. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to kind of meet Jason for the first time or be around him in, uh, in the media thing that we did. He genuinely is like the greatest guy on the planet. I'm yeah. Happy. It's there's different levels of, dude walks in a room he commands the attention and it's not like him wanting it that way at all because he's still just a super humble guy who just constantly deflects praise but like i was legitimately nervous you were kind of almost hyperventilating like i was before he walked in the room part of yeah i i was legitimately nervous i haven't felt that way and i told my dad this my junior year First round of the playoffs against Roger Bacon, I hit a walk-off single down a run, two two RBI single to win the game, two outs to end the season. And I walked it off to stay live. And I haven't felt that nervous since, like, the pitch before I hit that ball. What did I tell you? He's the most normal guy you will ever meet. And when he walked in the room, he is a commanding, make no mistake, he is a commanding presence. Mm Mm-hmm. But when he speaks, he's the most normal guy in the room. Yeah. And then the media thing ended. And the first thing he did was go directly to my daughter and go, Kelsey, and gave her a big hug. She had never met him before. (laughs) Never met him. Went straight to her. Kelsey gave her a big hug. And she was just like, (laughs) (laughs) no, that's like, like I had to tell you, that's Jason, man. That's, That's been him since the day he got here. And he has achieved a level of fame that changes almost everybody. Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed him even a little bit. What's what's the second thing he said? Am I supposed to get together on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Unprompted. Unprompted. (laughs) I didn't say a word. It's like, Chad, need to get together to do the podcast. Not... Not covering new heights, Jason coming on these airwaves. That's yeah. the second thing he said after he greeted my daughter with a big hug. That's him. That's mm-hmm. he's that genuine. He's that awesome of a dude. And that was so fucking cool tonight. Yeah. It was awesome. I, I I'm glad you got to like see that side of them. A little bit outside of the performance side because they mm-hmm. are performers. Yeah. Like they're gonna I mean, that... when the football thing's over, those dudes are gonna make a lot of money doing that. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, lot Travis that. is super, super good at it. He's got a really, really yeah. bright future in terms of like broadcasting, possibly just his, or he could just do the podcast. Wit yeah, is very quick. Yeah, it's extreme. The shoulder shaking when he, Orlando Brown was talking. That was really funny. <laughs> I uh, mean, the, the Orlando Brown, Joe Burrow stuff was incredible. Mm-hmm. When it's when they put it up, and it's going to probably be two or three weeks before it, it goes up. But when they put it up, I highly recommend watching it because Orlando Brown, like you can genuinely tell he was impacted by those two guys. Joe Burrow, you can legitimately tell he's impacted by those two guys. Football people love them because they are the footballiest of football motherfuckers, right? Mm -hmm. But they also have this charisma and presence and 
you know, aura to fill up a 12,500 seat yeah. venue. There's not a lot of people that, that can do that. No. And there's not a lot of schools that can claim that they have people that can do that. I don't think there is. There's one. zero. Like there's it's zero. It's insane how perfect the story panned out in terms of two brothers being the best play, best player at their position in the NFL, like in the history of the league. Ever. Ever. And then going to the same school, yeah, having the crazy stories, and right. then deciding to give back to the school and like both being like we're in and not pennies on the dollar. No, they gave they are they, that event dollars on the dollar. There's yeah. very few things you get in the NIL that are dollars on the dollar. And it, it's I don't know, man. It was it was awesome. It was it awesome. Really was. Yeah. The so. chili baths were perfect. Reagan the, got a perfect did picture. She get, of, did she get uh chili slung on her from the thing no but she got a wow. picture of jason like looking at the two girls and one of the girls was holding up handfuls <laughs> of skyline chili in her hands and he's like screaming in her face it was awesome <laughs> it, was it was so perfect. good man it was so good all right well uh, we could keep going we really could yeah. but uh it was a lot of fun man it was a really really unique event i don't uh, i'll get your opinion on this before we go okay. i don't think this is something you do every year no i do think it is something you do every couple years every two three years because i think that gives it a little bit of space a little bit of room to breathe and then allows it to like to be great i don't ever want something like this to feel forced where yeah. they feel like they have to do it but if this kicks off something for them, and it might, whether do arena tours or whatever, um, it was a great starting point. And I look forward to being a part of it any and every time that they get a chance to do it again. I will also say something Anthony DeFino pointed out when we talked to him right before Jason walked in. This is something that generally takes a year to plan. They did it in eight weeks. Yeah. If that was the product that was done in eight weeks, I can only imagine what it would look like if they had the proper time to like really plan and organize and like make it a thing. And they had to use the contingency plan. Yeah, like they had they to come inside. Plan a. Yeah, they used plan B. So it was <laughs> incredible. And I hope all of you that got to see it uh, loved it as much as we did. And if you didn't get to see it, whenever it gets released, I would recommend watching it because that is something, as you said, that is very unique to the University of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. There is nobody in the world that has two guys that have that connection to a place like those two guys have a connection to this place and they put on a hell of a show. Yeah. And <clears throat> they could very easily pair that with a musical artist. Sure. Have an opening I know, act. I know who we're thinking of. I don't think that's ever a possibility. <laughs> well, no, but, but, <laughs> but they, they could easily do a 20, oh. 25 minute opening act or middle type thing could you imagine if she made them the opening act at her shows <laughs> yeah go out there and tell your jokes i don't care right right <laughs> go do go do your little podcast go talk about the three technique or whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh you have messy as a special guest tonight here in argentina good for you <laughs> I'm going to go right. make a That's billion dollars. Right. That's going to wrap it up. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you staying up and doing the show. I, I hope everybody enjoyed the night as much as we did. Uh, we will see you uh, whenever next time is. Spring game Saturday. We got a lot going on. It's the nightcap. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Right here on BearcatJournal.com.